Hey friends, my name is Mark Dever. I'm the pastor of the Capitol Hill Baptist Church on the corner of 6th and A, Northeast, right here in Washington, D.C. In fact, I'm standing in the church office right now. This part of the hill was originally a farm. It's called Jenkins Farm, up on Jenkins Hill. George Washington identified it, uh, along with some others, as a good place for the National Capitol building to be built. In 1793, he actually laid the cornerstone for it six blocks down where the Capitol building stands today. But this part of the city really didn't grow into a place where many people lived. It was, as I say, a farm. Until the Civil War. During the time of the Civil War, the federal government grew a lot. If you've been walking around Capitol Hill before, you've noticed a lot of two-story wooden buildings. Those tend to be some of the earliest ones from the 1860s. That's when Capitol Hill grew up as a new neighborhood or or subdivision, like we might call it today. Perhaps some of you have walked by the Capitol Hill Baptist Church. It's on the corner, as I say, of 6th and A, Northeast. And there's been a church building here, really, since 1876. Let me just tell you the story briefly. One of the first people to move to the hill was Celestia Ferris. She was the chief washerwoman at the Federal Bureau of Engraving. She was also a Christian. And she wanted there to be Christian work here on the hill among the people who were moving in. So she began a prayer meeting. And in that prayer meeting, they began to pray specifically for evangelistic work, that is the spread of the gospel, the good news of Christianity, among the children and the families who were moving here to the hill. They started something called the Capitol Hill Baptist Sunday School Society. And in 1876, they actually purchased this corner right here on, on 6th and A, Northeast. We, we've been here that long. And they built this building. This is a picture of it we have hanging in our church office. A couple of years later, the people who were involved in the Sunday School actually became a church. They became the Metropolitan Baptist Church. That's the name they gave themselves. That's the name they kept until the 1960s when they added Capitol Hill to it. And then in 1995, we just shortened it to Capitol Hill Baptist Church. They probably called it Metropolitan because the most well-known Baptist church in the world at the time would have been the Baptist church pastored by C.H. Spurgeon in London called the Metropolitan Tabernacle. That's just a guess. But after 12 years, the church had grown so much that they actually bought the land next to it and built a second building in 1888. And this building stood as the place where that congregation met and worshiped from 1888 until 1911. In 1911, our church started meeting in a large tent on the northwest corner of the 6th and A intersection, where I'm standing right now. Now the Arundel Apartments are there. We met there in that tent for a full year, while in the year 1911, they built the building behind me now, our current structure. In January of 1912, we got rid of the tent and we moved into the new building. And since then, the congregation has grown and shrunk and grown again. Back in the early 1900s, this is the church that many people in this neighborhood went to. In fact, this was the first church of any denomination in the northeast quarter of D.C. It was a Baptist church, part of the Northern Baptist Convention, uh, not part of the Southern Baptist Convention. It was very active in music, in missions, played a great home for a lot of troops coming through in World War I and World War II. I met so many people back in the 1990s when I first came here across the country when I was doing weddings who had actually met and gotten married here in the 1940s during World War II. In fact, once I was doing a wedding for my own nephew in Colorado and his wife's grandparents had met and married at this church during World War II. It was a large congregation. The building was full. And there was a vital ministry 
in this church for years. For the first 40 plus years of the 20th century, John Compton Ball was the pastor and he's still well remembered. As the congregation grew, they built a new basement and first floor with offices in 1928. And then above it, they built the second, third, and fourth floors. It's now our children's ministry, the educational building in 1949. Now that's the last major external construction. After the 1950s, many churches in the middle of the city began to change. Some moved out. A lot of American population moved to suburbs. Churches changed. Some churches came that were new to the area. Other churches moved out with their congregations. This one actually stayed here. And when I came as the pastor in 1994, the oldest members in our congregation, those who were in their 90s and over 100, like Ms. Lillian, who lived across the street in East Capitol Street, were actually still here in the area. There were a couple of members here down A Street. There were, there were a couple of members down 5th Street, Southeast, just across the block. That's what was going on here when I got here in 94, an elderly congregation, about uh, 130 people, sweet, kind. A lot of them had, had careers as government employees. They were either born here or they had moved here during the Great Depression. During the, the last 25 years, the congregation has changed a lot. In fact, uh, I've had a number of you here in the neighborhood who don't come to this church say you've walked past on Sunday mornings and you've heard loud singing from inside that building. Well, that's because we do major on singing. We did change some interior work in the main hall, the sanctuary of the church in 2010. We, you could say, got rid of the choir loft and put in new pews and added a new balcony. I would say really we extended the choir loft to include the entire congregation. So now all 1,000 of us on a normal Sunday morning make up a congregation where we will often sing eight or nine or ten or more songs together during our times on Sunday morning. Visitors are welcome. That means you. We hear a sermon from the Bible. We hear portions of the Bible read. We pray together. People are greeting each other. In fact, one of the things that we're missing during these days when we're filming this, these days of epidemic and quarantining, is missing meeting together. I hope you're watching this long after that's done and we're able to meet regularly every Sunday morning at 1030. You'd be welcome to come and meet with us then. This is a church that's welcomed people from all over the world, all ages, for over a century now here in Capitol Hill. And we're still doing that. We'd love to welcome you. We're here because we want people to know the truth about God and about ourselves, about what God has done for us. And we want you to hear more of that. If we can be helpful to you in that, we would love to be. So if this building has been a curiosity and you've wondered, what's this church building doing here? That's what we're doing here. Really the same kind of thing Celestia Ferris and those friends back in the 1860s were doing when they began the Capitol Hill Baptist Sunday School Society, trying to tell children and men and women about the good news of Jesus Christ about what he's done for us and about what he does for us still today. If you'd like to know more, come along and check us out or look at any of the things you find on our website, www.capbap.org.